You're listening to the King of the Fourth podcast, offering in-depth analysis on all things Boston Celtics with your hosts, Jim and Mike Quigley. All right. Happy Monday, everyone. And welcome to a special edition of King of the Fourth Quarter podcast. Um, This morning, um, I think all of us uh, Celtics fans woke up to tweets from Woj and then um, around 7.30 a.m. from Sham saying, that there's been uh, conversations at the very least at some point a time that, that time frame was not defined uh, between the Celtics and the Nets regarding Jalen Brown and Kevin Durant. I don't think this is a huge surprise. Um, what's unfortunate is the two national writers um, are out there tweeting about it today with, you know, no real timeline if a deal's going to get done, whether it's close. Um, you know, there's been some offers that Chams um reported upon um but you know this is obviously at least from my perspective seems to be leaked from the nets to gain um some sort of leverage whether it's on the celtics or or other teams around the league um but it's out there and it's um you know you, you need to take it at face value because of the guys that are reporting upon it so there's definitely been conversations at some point um again i don't think those conversations are shocked Shocking to have ha- had happened, um, but uh, here we are. And um, you know, Mike, I'll, I'll let you go ahead with opening thoughts. I did a long Twitter thread, um, so my thoughts are kind of out there, and I'll reiterate them on the on on this pod today um, about you know my views on on, on the potential deal um, if it were to happen. Yeah, I was uh, I was a little taken back by the tweets. Uh, this morning, I, I didn't think the Celtics were actually in on this. I know there might've been conversations, but I never really really thought it was a possibility. And my first initial reaction was if this is the offer and this is what the Nets are asking for, I don't know that Miami and Toronto could beat that offer. And obviously the Suns can't now because Aiton can't go there unless uh, that's just not happening. But and Bam can't be traded there. Bam out of oh, it's a no trade clause, but yeah. they can move him if he agrees to it. Yeah. But um, you know, with Bam, well, he's got the rookie extension, so he can't be on the same team as Ben Simmons unless they move Ben Simmons. And it's the same with Bam out of Io, which really puts the Celtics, you know, in the driver's seat if they want to make this happen. It feels like the deal that Brad offered of um Derek White, Jalen Brown, and the draft pick was low and I would have said no to that if I were the Nets too and what the Nets counted with was a lot more which may be too much I don't know um I think Kevin Durant's a terrific player obviously one of the best players in the NBA definitely one of the best scorers in the NBA uh and him and Jason Tatum on the same team on the same floor would be very intriguing and you know expectations would be through the roof and they should be the favorites to win it all if that happened um but I'm a, very hesitant on how I feel about it. I, I believe in the team that they have. They were two games away. They were up in the fourth quarter of to go up 3-1. They got deeper by adding Malcolm Brogdon and Gallinari, and they still have three roster spots to play with. They have some smaller TPEs where they can bring in talented guys. I just feel like if Jalen Brown doesn't want to be here, and he said he does, That's what the report is, that he does want to be here. Uh, But if he doesn't want to be here, the trade makes sense to me. But if he does want to be here and they're making this trade, I don't know if I like it. I think Kevin Durant has some recent injury history that I'd be very concerned about. They already have Al Horford, who's older. They have Rob Williams and his injury concerns. They just brought in Malcolm Brogdon and his injury concerns. And if you make this trade, Marcus Smart's part of it, because that's what Brooklyn's asking for. You're really throwing your eggs at. You don't know you know, if Marcus Spot will be a part of it, but yeah. Well, that's what yeah. Brooklyn wants. That that's. But what I think I want. think I think what's being leaked, um, whether it's a Derek White offer or the Marcus Smart package, is the best of what Brooklyn's received so far. Otherwise, you'd be seeing the Suns um, deal get leaked because they want. Well, what is the, the Suns? Best, deal? Well, that's the point. Him? I don't think they're getting great offers from other teams, so that's why this one's leaked. Because right. this is the best that's out there, whether it's the white one or the smart one. So if you're the Celtics, you're kind of standing pat. Um, if the reports to be believed that the actual deals on the pay- table, there's no reason to up smart right now when no one around the league 
seems to have anything to match. I, you know, there isn't another player of Brown. Unless Jalen Brown doesn't want to be here. Well, they will not to make a trade because he put it out there. Yeah. Well, so th- th- there's a lot of, there's a lot here, you know, that's and, like my, my last point too, is just Jason Tatum's earned the right to be the leader of this team. And I don't know how he would feel about Kevin Durant coming here and what that means for him. Uh, he's not the best player on the team anymore. If that happens, at least right now, and the other thing, too, is Kevin Durant's the type of guy that I don't know after one year if he'll stay. He could win a ring and at the all-star break decide he wants to play with a different best friend. He has a history of that. I feel like the best move for the Celtics is to move forward with the team that they have. I, I think that's a safe move, and they can win. They, they can beat the Bucs. They can beat the Warriors. They can beat the teams out West. I, I still think the Celtics – should be in the conversation to be the favorite to win it all next year with the team that they have. And obviously if you bring in Kevin Durant, you're still in that conversation, but I think long-term there's a lot of risks here. And if he gets hurt and you don't win the championship and then he walks, you've given up all your draft capital. You trade away Jalen Brown. I just, I feel like the Celtics could get burned here and it could really backfire. I don't think they need to make this move. I don't think they're the Miami heat where they have to make this move. Are they the Phoenix Suns where they have to? The Celtics don't have to. There's a big difference. They don't need Kevin Durant. They I really appreciate don't. everything you had to say. And as a fan, I, I mostly agree with you. I, but I, I do um, – I think you're minimizing how much better they get with Durant and um, how much better Durant is than Brown. And whether it's Derek White or Malcolm Brogdon running the point guard, even if Smart was included, they're a lot better with Durant, regardless of who that point guard is. Um, I know he wore down, down the stretch last year. I thought that had a lot to do with him playing 48 minutes a game for like the last 20 games of the season just to get them into the play-in. Um, I think people forget that the year before, he almost single-handedly beat the Bucks by himself if his shoe size was a half inch smaller. I, I That's how uh, transcendent a talent he is. Right, but how many games so, uh, did he you, this year with injury? So you, you are right when he they are contenders now. I, I think they are the hands-down favorites with him to win it if they got in. And um, injury is definitely a concern. Um, 30, he's in his 30s. He's had lower leg injuries. Yeah. Um, but it's also we're seeing a new era of athlete that seem to overcome that now than as opposed to a decade ago or a decade before that. Um, kind of starting with Kobe after his Achilles and coming back at, at an older age. And he wasn't what he was, but he's still very good. And then it's gotten better and better in just about every sport. Kobe so, missed season after the season. You know, it used to be ACLs were the end of your career in football. That's not the case anymore. So I, I agree with injury concerns. I, I, I and As a fan, I, I'd prefer to see this thing ride out. I like the journey of it. I like seeing guys overcome deficits in their game and improve and get over that mountain that um, they struggled to reach the season before. But it, as a GM, I could completely understand why the Celtics have, at the very least, made phone calls to see what it would take. And in my opinion, so, you know, you raised a good point about Brown. And and I saw Mark Murphy's tweet today that um, he loves Boston. And it sounds like that's coming from someone close to Brown. We don't know what the conversations with Jalen Brown was two months ago. And Jalen Brown's probably within his right to say, I don't know if I'm going to resign yet. I don't know what the landscape's going to look like in two years. You're asking me to make a um, guarantee for you. You know, we just, I'm not going to do that. That's not a smart move for anyone to to do, right? To say, I'm going to guarantee that I'm going to stay here within two years. And so Duran is locked up for four years. Could he ask for a trade at where he goes next? I suppose. But if it's his track record. um, Well, he's only asked for the trade this time. He's left in free agency before. He left. He That's asked. A great for, situation. Yeah, to go play with his friend. He he and he made a real mistake in character of who he was going to go play with, and 
I mean, he's coming to a great situation here. He'd be coming into a great, great situation here. Um, in which, and he's locked up for four years. And so you have to believe in your, if you're the Celtics, you have to ask yourself, do you believe in Ime? Do you believe in your culture? Do you believe in Jason Tatum and the talent around him? Guys like Malcolm Brogdon, that this is going to be a good place for, and you do all your intel, you do all your research. And if you come to the conclusion that you believe that it's better than even odds, that this is going to work, then you, then you consider it. I, if your goal is to win a championship as a GM, this puts you in a better position to win a championship otherwise. And, and so that that's the thing you – that's a consideration here, at least in my opinion. That, that's where the consideration on whether to make this move. Now, do you give up the farm? I don't think you do. Um, I'd hate to part ways with Jalen Brown. But I, I, Jalen Brown's never going to be the player that Kevin Durant is. And four years from now, if I'm a betting man, I'd still say Kevin Durant's going to be better four years from now than Jalen Brown is. Wow. If you just look at how long our that. athletes play and at the level they play at now. 35 games played two years ago, 55 last year. I don't think it's trending in the right direction with this guy's health. Two years ago, he didn't play at all because of his Achilles. And he was um, 30 games last year. And on top of that, you're not just bringing Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant isn't the type of guy who just comes to the team. It doesn't seem that way since he's gone to Brooklyn. And I just buy into everything you're doing. I mean, he, in order to sign with Brooklyn, they had to sign DeAndre um, Jordan to like a four year, $40 million contract because that's who he. Oh, I, I think that stuff needs to be matted out uh, for sure. But previous to that, he did buy into what Golden State was doing. I mean, and the reason they didn't win that last championship is because he wasn't on the floor. And he did buy into what Oklahoma City was doing. Like, he, he, he's, he's a guy that goes out and plays basketball and plays hard. I, I think you're minimizing his value as a player. I think he's a miserable fuck, and I can't stand him. Well, that's really different. Yeah. Great to happen. And, and I don't trust him, Jim. I really don't trust him. If next year he comes here and they don't win at all, I think he's gone. I don't think the contract matters. I think he'll demand a trade. I don't see, think he's any different than his buddies. And, and, and now I also think that the Celtics put themselves in the corner by, you know, offering this, if it's true, this first trade to the Nets. Now it's out there and, you know, Brown doesn't want to be here. Then you have to make it, obviously. But I don't know if it's the right move. I, I don't know if I agree that, you know, he makes you a contender right away because I don't trust him. I, don't I, trust him. I, I think it's better than the contender. I think you're the favorite immediately. I think you're a favorite immediately to have to cover two wings with the offensive talent of uh, Tatum and Durant. I, I'm not sure how you teams match up and do that. You know, maybe outside of the Clippers. I don't know how teams match up to do that. It's, um, They'd put tremendous pressure, and then if you start looking at the complementary pieces to go along with them and the way they're built right now, they, they're they the favorites anyways I, as of today, I think, but I think this puts them. This guy know, was a 3-1 on the Warriors. Law lost the series and then went to their team. He was down. He just got swept by the Celtics, and he's going to come here. I just – I think the Celtics have the team to win it now. I think it's a big risk. I think it's a huge risk, man. I don't – I mean, it might happen, that, that'll be it, but – Well, I, I think they both come with risks. You know, unless you know Jalen's going to stay here. Like, the risks are – Yeah. Jalen walks uh, yeah. for nothing in two years, and you don't get a championship within this two-year window, or you have to trade him – you're not going to get a better player for Jalen Brown. This no, no, this would be the best deal you could ever get. And then yeah. it's so you're like kind of so that's your risk there. And I, I think that's a real risk. Um, now, if the reports to be sometimes situations like this, so re reanalyze conversations. Maybe there's a conversation going on between the Celtics and Browns agent right now that he really wants to be here. You know, maybe this. 
motivates that type of conversation and, and the whole dynamic after today changes. That's that's entirely possible that that's going on right now. And then this, you know, kind of is off the table and the Celtics move on from this deal. Um, but that's a risk there. And, and I, I think it's a real one and that need, really needs to be considered. Or if he signs an extension that makes the deal easier to make because Brooklyn has them locked up and they're going to ask for less. Well, he's not going to sign an extension now. It makes no financial sense to Jalen right. Brown to do that. He's going to do. He's not going to sign until next offseason because um, right. he can't sign for the max until next year. with an extension right now. It just makes no sense. So that's going to happen later. Um, as far as the risks for Durant, you outline him. You know, he's he's got injury history. Um, you know, there's been. You know, he's asking out of Brooklyn. Although I think Brooklyn was just a terrible, terrible situation last off season, Last season. You know, when you start looking at Hot and you look at Irvin and all the stuff that went on there. And he created them. He's part of it. Oh, he sure. Has- yeah, no, he has responsibility. Yeah. He has responsibility. Um, I, and I think, you know, I, I think some of the other risks, the Tatum stuff is more minimal. I, I think the Brown being disgruntled this year is a minimal risk of not making the trade. You know, I'm not worried about that. If the Celtics don't make the trade about him being disgruntled this year as much. Um, but so you you stop weighing, yeah. So you the Celtics, you have to weigh the risks and reward, and so the reward on the Celtics side, you keep Brown, he stays, and you have sustainable contention for a long time, um, with a chance. I'm not even going to call it a probability; a good chance of winning a title. If you get Durant, how long that's sustainable? Probably less, but the probability of winning a title goes up um, pretty aggressively. Yeah. And, um, and like, I don't think it's, you know, that, and that's, I want to be clear as a fan. I want, I don't really want them to make the. I actually almost more than a title. I enjoy watching things kind of process and, 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 you know, them go through their ups and downs and come together on the team and have those great wins and the group stays together you know, I actually I'm really enjoying with the Patriots and the Mac Jones kind of experience for that reason. I, you know, I love Brady, but this is kind of new in watching a young quarterback. Same thing here. But if we're just talking, uh, and I'm probably in the minority, fans want championships. If we're talking what is more likely, the Celtics are much more likely to win a championship with Durant. And, and I, I don't I don't think that's really an arguable point. Yeah, it's a good point because you, you think about Rob's health last year and it was probably the biggest impact as to why they didn't win it, mm-hmm. that Tatum, Tatum's play in the championship. Um, he replaced Kevin Durant with Jalen Brown, although Jalen Brown, if the Celtics won, it was probably your NBA championship MVP, but the Celtics' odds of winning probably go up if Durant's on the team last year in that series and not Brown. I don't think we're looking at – a scoring drought in game six of like 22 to 0 or whatever it was in that first or second quarter if Kevin Durant's on the Celtics. You, you know, look so at there's the, definitely inconsistencies in Brown's games. The turnovers would be down with Kevin Durant. Brown turned the ball over way too much in the playoff run last year, uh, especially against Miami. I don't think you see that with Durant, obviously. Um, you know, they are better. And, and if they get them, hopefully all the good things, we get to see it in the, in the moments that matter the most. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. I, the good thing about this conversation, Jim, is that the Celtics are in this position. You know, not This is why you draft Kalen Brown. This is why you draft Marcus Smart. This is why you get these guys and develop them to put yourself in these situations. Not only did they put themselves in this. So people I heard on the radio today were comparing this to the Kevin Garnett trade. It's not apples to apples because that's no, team no, 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 because your, your your organization was in the toilet. Yeah, and you develop these players into championship contenders, and so now it's it, it's it's an even it's an even bigger conversation. It's really a, it's a, it's an awesome conversation that your your organization was at the crossroads where you know if you had won the lottery, you were getting Durant, and, and not making pro- a trade. And you're probably moving PS and, and building your organization that way. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And so they they had to make a big move um, based on where they were. 
So, yeah, it's completely different. The, the Celtics are, are there, and, uh, you know, Kevin Garnett had not won yet. Kevin Garnett's a different animal than Duran. I think we can agree with that in terms of loyalty and... <laughs> Oh, we, oh, yeah. You oh, know, just to, although <laughs> Kevin Garnett yeah. didn't want to be here, right? So maybe Kevin Durant falls in love with Boston. There's always that possibility. I mean, players hate Boston, except for Kyrie Irving, typically until they play here. Yeah. Uh, speaking, speaking really for all sports, maybe like Mookie Betts and Kyrie Irving are in the, their own place when it comes to that with their own experiences. But typically, you know, they love it here. And so what I was just trying to say is that it's just – there's so much to talk about now, depending on how this goes, you know, where you can go back and, and be like, well, what if they didn't make the trade or they did make the trade? And um, you, you have to wonder, too, if, if, if this conversation happened before the Malcolm Brogdon trade happened and, you know, you, if you have to include Marcus Martin trade, you wonder if part of the thinking of getting Brogdon was, well, we're getting Durant. Uh, and this is our this is our replacement for our starting point guard. And what a way to turn Marcus Smart's so. value into something. I don't I don't think so. Um, I, I I understand the thinking, but I I think that was an, made it independent. I think there was an opportunity to get Malcolm Brogdon. Um, that 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 helps for nothing. That helps this team now. Um, I don't think it gets in the way of a Kevin Durant trade. I've seen arguments on both sides of you know the Celtics aren't thinking this because they made the Brogdon. I I, I think that they're independent. Of one another, um, and and but, having, great, but, but having Brogdon um, again, if Durant was brought on, if you start thinking about a lineup, um, you know, anchored by Brogdon, Tatum, and Durant, wow. and you start thinking about what the Celtics had on the floor for the finals, which is still very yeah. good, but the turnover rate that they had, you're flipping that. You're who's flipping the starting that shooting guy? Does it matter? It, I don't know. This is where you could plug in Derek White as just being a defensive minded guy, or you could play the two bigs. It really, it almost doesn't matter. Yeah. But if you start Sam Hauser and you have that shooting, it, it, it gets great. Yeah. It really, you, you just you put in the puzzle pieces from there around those three, and you, the pressure you're going to put on defense. Defense so long. is incredible. So long. Incredibly long when you think about Rob, Al, Tatum, and Durant on the floor at the same time. It, uh, it's it's I mean, I mean, and you can play you can play Peyton Pritchett big minutes, yeah. minutes because whether it's Brogdon or Smart, they're both six five six six. So it, it, it just the possibilities. Yeah. And, yeah, and what the Celtics have now, there's a lot of possibilities too. So don't get me wrong, the Celtics. If this trade doesn't happen, it's oh, yeah. Jalen Brown's head straight, and and I think he can get him there. But it's fun to play fantasy owner. And the thing that's crazy about Durant, too, that, that the Celtics don't really have is he's the type of guy who attracts those um, fringe veterans who can bring a lot to a team for nothing. It'll come play, you know, for the minimum just to play with Kevin Durant. Yeah. Uh, whether you like them or not, the Blake Griffins, the Marcus Aldridge's, there's so many of them you see happen at the trade deadline, getting bought out every year that just, you know, they – like flies on shit, just go to the Kevin Durant team or whatever. So and that, I think that might be why you're seeing a freeze on some of the mid inning free agents right now. I think they're trying to see how this plays out to decide where they're going to go, whether it's playing time or to go for a championship with him. I yeah. So what's curious to me from the Nets perspective now too is – It's a great trade. I, I don't think they have a lot of great offers. And I, I, we don't even know if the Celtics offer is still on the table anymore. If it is, it's great. And yeah. if it's not, Durant's going to play. And they built a good team, in my opinion. I think they've had a good offseason. They still don't have a center, which is a problem, obviously, because you saw what the Celtics did to them inside. Outside they, of yeah, that. They have a good team. I don't think they can keep Kyrie or Ben Simmons together because I – I think they're both drama queens. Fucking crazy. <laughs> and it's just going to go downhill. Because, and I think that's part of the things that um, Duran is sensing. you got to remember, Simmons was brought in there and everything, then he refused to play. Mm -hmm. the, and so I, I, like, I think this is all going into Durant's thinking. Um, so, but I, I don't think there's many great offers out there, is my point. Yeah, but if you, and, yeah. And if you have a Nets, you get Taylor together. Brown yeah. and Marcus Ma. To play with Ben Simmons as your rebound? Well, I don't think Marcus Smart's on the table. You, keep, saying, you keep bringing him. I don't think Smart's on the table. I don't. Well, that's what they asked for. 
Oh, they could ask for it, but I don't think he's, I don't think they have a better offer than Brown and Derek White. Well, even still. Yeah. That's a good rebuild right there. Yeah. I don't think they have a better offer than that. Yeah. If if this is even truly an offer, you know? Um, And so you just, you wonder what they're going to do. Are they just going to ride this into the season? Um, Because that could have some negative, that could play out pretty negatively too. If they decide to do that, they're in a really interesting spot. I I know they're putting on a brave face and saying, we'll just ride this out into the season. I I agree with that. I agree if they do that though, because I just look at James Harden and and how that worked out for the Rockets. The Rockets wrote it out and and they, they got extremely, like it was a great trade in my opinion with the amount of draft capital that they got for him. I think I Same think with the Sixers riding out for Simmons, you know, and then they end up getting hot and um, yeah, yeah, it, that's a good example. It, it, I, if I'm the Nets and, and Derek White and Brown and the draft pick is the only thing is on the table, I, I seriously consider it because if my rebuild is Curry, Brown, White, Ben Simmons, uh, I, I feel pretty good about that. I feel pretty good that I'm going to still have a team, I'll hire a good coach to come in it'll be like the Nets team with Spencer Dinwiddie we'll have a team that plays hard we'll make the playoffs and we'll rebuild that way and we're still an attractive destination for free agents because we're Brooklyn uh, I, I think it's a great trade it's slam dunk for me if, if there's nothing else on the table I, I actually think that roster would be a disaster <laughs> I think it'd be a disaster I don't think it would be uh, Simmons Brown I, I I don't know if they I don't think that meshes I, I'm just not high on Simmons at all. I know some people still are. Uh, I, I just. But you're stuck with him if you're Brooklyn. Yeah. Well, that doesn't mean. You know, you got to try to make it work. Doesn't mean he's a good asset. Yeah. Or a good fit just about anywhere. I. I it's. um, It's interesting, you know, and you, you have these other trades uh, around the league that are kind of waiting to play out because of it, what's going on with Mitchell and, you know, you're hearing the Kings involved now and Angel asking for potentially seven, eight draft picks or something just ridiculous. Get uh, a team to do it. Yeah. And then. Um, oh, what? It, it's, Ainge uh, ruined the market. I mean, he ruined the Kevin Durant trade. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did. He ruined it. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, you hear, you hear the Lakers trying to get Buddy Hield and uh, company over from the Pacers, and that one kind of fell through. Yeah, now they're trying to call him Sexton. Yeah, it's got to be it's got to be frustrating um, for GMs around the league because I think this one's probably holding a lot of stuff up. I think this is... Oh, of course it is. Yeah, and other, other moves are kind of being held up because of that. So... Yeah, uh, trades are being held up. Yeah. If you look at the free agency landscape, it's pretty thin i mean you have uh colin sexton you have um dennis schroeder it's oh yeah no, it's not great. yeah um i was trying to think of where fits would be for those guys but oh you know, this this show i thought we we're going to be talking about some of the um roster and some of the players but oh this is a good we'll way to tease to... things going forward so what we're, what we're going to do going forward hopefully we stop this within the next week everyone is that um we're going to highlight a, a player or a Depending on some lower tier players. Look at my 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 notes on JD Davidson. We haven't put up a YouTube video in a while, but there, there's a lot of so notes. many notes. Pages. So we're, what we're gonna do um, yeah. we're gonna highlight each player on the roster. We're gonna try to find some special fun facts about them, how we think they're gonna fit, what do we think they're selling, their floor, whether they're gonna last the season or not, um, as a way to kill time between now and the season. Obviously, if a rumor like this pops up in our actual trade. We'll have to move in with this podcast. What I would tell Celtics fans today, because I'm seeing the reactions on Twitter, and obviously Brown did his uh, shaking my head tweet. Um, everyone take a deep breath. I, I think um, these conversations were definitely happening. I think everyone should assume that the Celtics at the very least made a phone call. Brooklyn was definitely going to call them because of who they had. Um, you know, and I'm sure names are bantied about, um, whether they're actual offers or what even constitutes a formal offer, who the hell knows. Uh, and as long as the Celtics are honest and upfront with Jalen Brown about what's really going on, mm-hmm. I think those things can be, um, uh, restored and, you know, maybe this re-engages conversations about what his commitment is here. 
Uh, so I, I, you know, there's a lot of unknowns here. Um, but Mike, you kind of brought up the good point earlier. This is not the same as Gannett because regardless of how this lands, you're going to yeah. land pretty well. Exactly. They're a deep team right now. They're, yeah. they're good to compete. Um, so yeah. I'm excited for these upcoming pods. I have my J.D. Davidson comparisons that I, that I put together. Will Bynum, Ramon Sessions, Johnny Flynn, Eric Bledsoe. I, I was saying those could be his sailings. And I said, if he doesn't pan out, he could be like a Marcus Banks. I don't think any of you want that. He's playing in Europe somewhere. Yeah. yeah, so I'm excited to talk about it. Even the other two-way player, I can't pronounce his name anymore. I did some stuff on him too. So very exciting stuff. Yeah, this is really exciting stuff. Way more exciting than Durant Room is, right? Um, but Way when- more. I did homework, so I'm excited about it. I have my free agent C lifts, my TPE targets, where they can do this with their little TPEs, Rudy <laughs> Gay, Roy Hachimera. Terrence Davis, Robin Lopez, Willie Homan Gomez, the guy I've been talking about every offseason, Frank the Tank, Tory Craig. Come I think on. Comiskey, Justice, Justice Winslow. Uh, Justice Winslow, he's still kicking around. He's still kicking around. He averaged like six points a game last year. You know when Angel offered like five picks for him? Um, yeah, we're all mad that they couldn't get him. So, <laughs> all right, well – We'll see what happens. Um, Maybe sure for the next pod, huh? Dive I'm into sure, some of these shitty plays. I'm sure you're going to have a, a anonymous Eastern Conference GM, a.k.a. Pat Riley, come Riley. out and say D- Jalen Brown's going to be a cancer in that locker room now. <laughs> Jalen Brown wants to play for the Heat. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure that's coming any day. Um, but uh, it, you guys, enjoy your summer. Uh, you know I, really folks, exciting? When we break down. Luke Cornett. That's right. That's right. What what percentage do you give this trade to go through if you're giving percentages? Honestly? Yeah. I think it's pretty high. I think it's like 50-50. I think it's like a 10%. I think there's some traction here and it could be real. I'm not so the more I think about it, I'm not so sure there is. All right. Well, I think this is a leverage rumor. Why do we do the plot? Because it's, I mean, you got to respond to Shams and Woj. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Kalen Brown's going to be on the Brooklyn Nets and drop 50 on this next year. <laughs> All right, everyone. Yeah, sure. All right. Jimmy's smiling and not saying anything. So that's the end of the pod. Jim's frozen. Go Celtics. Have a nice day. Remember.